All right, so I've been coming to SOCAP for years, and for years I keep hearing the question, how do we measure impact? Uh, but I'm going to step back a little bit further and ask a, a bigger question. Uh, I'm going to ask the question of how do we measure impact across an entire portfolio of companies. So I run Fledge. Fledge is the conscious company accelerator. And we have 39 graduates in our, in our portfolio. We invest in, in all of our companies. Uh, and 38 of these companies have different business models. There's two cook stove companies, and then everyone else does something different. So how on earth do I add cook stoves with goats, uh, with fruits and vegetables, with recycling cotton and recycling you know, lots of other things? How on earth do we do that? Well, one place we can look is the gears rating system. So uh, Fledge is a certified B corporation. We have a gears rating, as do lots of companies. Uh, and when you look at that rating system from the inside out, what you find is that it comes up with a number, but the numbers aren't addable. The numbers aren't averageable. So for instance, uh, here are three impact hubs. Fledge operates inside Impact Hub Seattle. It's awesome. We have the highest score. Uh, we also partner with Impact Hub San Francisco. Uh, which is pretty close, uh, and Impact Hub Boulder. So three Impact Hubs, three of the same companies doing the same business model with three different scores. And these scores, what's interesting is our, our hub in Seattle isn't 13% better or more impactful or anything than San Francisco. It's not 13 more of anything than San Francisco. It's just slightly higher because we do a little bit more on that rating system. So while the numbers are nice in comparison from year to year within the company, they're not comparable between companies. And they're not averageable, and they're not additive, and, and whatnot. So then we can turn to IRIS. IRIS is a great set of standards. It's 488 ways to measure the impact of your particular company. And so I picked out three of these from their catalog just to see what it was like. So energy saved, affordable housing, and school enrollment. That's very indicative of the kind of portfolios that, that many of us build. So how do you add uh, energy saved and school enrollment together? Well, that's an unsolved problem in the IRIS system. Right? What the answer is is uh, you, just add, you just talk about all of them one after the other. So in my portfolio, how many cook stoves did we, did we sell? And how much cotton have we recycled? And, 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 but they don't add together. So to answer this question, I had an epiphany at the end of last year. I had the epiphany that we're looking at the problem too close, too close and too down into the details. That we need, what we need to do is step back 10,000 feet and worry about it at that level. Right? And the result is a book I published earlier this year called the Pinchot Impact Index. The Pinchot Impact Index, first and foremost, thinks about the problem of impact across the entire scale of everything that is possible to do in impact in both for-profits and non-profits. And that scale is humongous if you think about all the problems of the world. And yet, we're going to squeeze it into a, an index of 1 to 7. And I'm going to walk you through what these, what these levels are. So a P1, right? P for Pinchot, one for, one for the first number in the index, is anything you've done that does some good in the world. So this is anything from you've put one solar panel on a roof to uh, you've, uh, you've started an organic farm to uh, one school enrollment and so forth, right? Any one, any hundred, any thousand, any million things you've done that have just done that one solution but haven't yet uh, continued on to make systemic change. So P1's down here. P2 is way bigger. P2 is you've made systemic change in the world. So whatever you've done, whether that's um, created a system where solar panels will then show up on every house in the nation eventually. That's systemic change. That's change where we're getting rid of all three stone cooking in the world because we found a solution that everyone can afford and adopt. That's systemic change. Right? That's a P2 in this level. Because some systemic changes are bigger than others, and a P3 is solving world hunger. Right? So again, uh, I'll stick with my, my examples of cook stoves. That's nice. If we got a cook stove in every house that burned half the fuel, that would be awesome but people would still not be able to cook meals on it who didn't have food. And if we solved the problem of world hunger completely on this index, that is a P3. And you can see that's, there's a big gap there. 
a big, a big scale, but P4 gets bigger because P4 is global poverty. So if no one is poor on the planet, everyone has at least enough money for food and shelter and so forth, that's a bigger problem than solving world hunger. That's a P4, it keeps getting bigger. Five is world peace. And by now you might be wondering how on earth it gets to seven. Uh, six is universal happiness. Six is what I call a really good day on Star Trek. Um, so six, we're way up here somewhere. Um, six is you go to the wall, you ask for whatever you want, and it gives it to you. Right? So any, any material needs are taken care of, any spiritual needs are taken care of, everyone on the planet is happy. Think about gross national happiness. The answer is yes at P6. And there's one more level. I need the chair for that, which is P7 way up here. Uh, which is universal enlightenment. Everyone is the Dalai Lama. Right? And if anyone has anything better than that, that's awesome. Let's make a P8. Right? So at that scale, um, there really isn't any difference between selling a few cook stoves and putting a few kids in school and, um, and cleaning up this and cleaning up that. They're all down at the P1 level, which may sound kind of silly, but it's useful. Because now I can say that within my portfolio, I have, let's say, three P1s. And I can add them together. So what you find out is when you think about it at this scale, that, you, that the uh, range of impacts is actually a logarithmic scale. And we're kind of used to that, but we don't remember what a logarithm is because they didn't teach it to us. You know, it was like seventh grade we learned logarithms. Here's how it works. Each one of these levels is 1,000 times bigger than the level before. And so you can think of it as there's units hiding underneath each level. It's 1,000 units for P1 and a million for P2 and a billion for P3 and so forth. In English, it makes, it makes a lot of sense because each one of these levels has a name, right? Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, and so forth. So what you do to add them together, which is, looks really complicated, but it's not that complicated. Excel will do this for you. As you figure out how many units it is, you add those together, and you take the logarithm of that, um, and that's, again, one calculation in Excel, and it gives you a number. So three P1s together is a P1.16. So you can see we have fractions here. We have decimals. We have some details. Right? And here's how you do it in Excel. You just put, the, put that formula in Excel, and it will spit you out the P number. Now, the next epiphany as I'm working through this problem earlier this year is, look, we can do the same thing for damage. We can do the same thing on the negative scale. And I won't walk you through all of them because it's, I won't walk you through all of them because it's kind of obvious. P negative 1 is driving a Prius. It's doing less bad in the world. Uh, and a P negative 7 is the end of the universe. It's kind of symmetric. Um, so, you know, the oil companies and all their damage would be like a P negative 2. And once you have that idea, now you can do net impact with this measurement. Now you can take, let's say, a public company that has some good parts and some bad parts to it and add those together. So, for example, really quick, two P1s and a P negative 2. Well, when you do that math, you get a P negative 1.99, right? Because a P neg a P1 is a very small compared to a P negative 2. It doesn't really move the number very far. All right, lastly, the other uh, epiphany when working through this is that often we mix up the difference between what the potential impact is and the actual achieved impact. And in fact, there's three levels. What is potentially achieved by this idea? One of the fledglings is going to recycle cotton. There's a humongous change in the world. That potential is huge, but that company, that one company, is not going to recycle all the cotton in the world. That's unlikely. But the potential of that idea is huge. The intention of that company is to recycle a large amount of cotton, to make systemic change in the world where cotton is as recyclable as paper and plastic and, and metals. Right? That's a P2 on this level, just to be clear. And how far have they gotten so far? Well, not very far. Right? They're a very new company. And so they've achieved very little. And so the way you add this together is on the achieved side. So you make, you make it clear when you're doing the addition whether you're working on potential intended or achieved. And on the achieved piece, you add one more factor. And it's limited. You can either multiply the number by 0.01%, 1%, 10%, 50%, or 100. Are you just starting? Have you done a little bit? Have you done a wee bit? Are you halfway through, or are you all done? And you, you apply that to the uh, units. And what you get when you look at my 39 fledglings is an actual number. So our intended impact of those 39 companies is a P2.005. And our achieved impact to date 
is p 0 0.695, which, OK, that's a small number. We can call it in baseball terms. We can call that a 695, which sounds better. Um, but the key is I have a number assigned to my portfolio. And next year, I expect that number to get bigger. And in 10 years, when some of the companies have died and some of the companies have achieved more, I expect that number to get bigger. And so now there exists a way to say this portfolio has an impact of a certain number. And at least within that portfolio, that's a trackable number. Across portfolios, maybe we're looking a little bit too far away. 10,000 feet is too far, and the numbers aren't quite uh, uh, comparable. But at least we can certainly tell a P1 from a P2 or a P1.5 from a P2.005. Right? It's pretty clear. So that is the Pinchot Impact Index in a nutshell. Uh, and one final word is, where on earth did this name come from? Well, I was standing at a very unique university. It's called Pinchot University up in Bainbridge Island, Washington. Standing next to Gifford Pinchot, who's the founder of the school, who let us name, it, name the school after him. Uh, it let us do it. He didn't want us, to, want us to do it. And he was talking about an idea that he's been batting around for 10 years when I had this just incredible idea that I can solve your problem, Gifford. I can solve the problem of the Hapodamo Index, which I won't tell you about. It's in the book. Um, and then had those one wonderful moments where two seconds later, I said, oh my god, if I can solve that, I can solve the problem of measuring impact across a portfolio. And sat down, wrote the book, and named it after him. So thank you. <laughs>